18 and 19. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her. <laughs> oh, I better take my time. Well, I'm not going to take my time because you're going to think I'm here a long time. Okay. She had a garment of diverse colors upon her. Can I, can I talk to you? She wore that which represented the possibilities are endless. Yes, yes, yes. You know, orange, the sunsets of my days, blue, ah, the sky's the limit, red, ah, the lineage I come from, green, ah, fertility. One day I'm going to get married, I'm going to have children. Okay, she wore. She had a garment of, of, of diverse colors upon her. Oh, glory. There is an anointing upon her. There is an anointing of a future and a hope upon her. For such robes, oh, yes, uh-huh, were the king's daughters that were virgins. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, when you saw me and I was wearing this robe, it testified, it was an outer witness of an inner reality. It meant I am a virgin. Mm -hmm. Then his servant brought her out and bowed to the door after her. And Tamar puts ashes. Now, you know Pastor Rena put no ashes on her here. Tamar removes. <laughs> it means she's naked. I Means she's exposed. Well, why would she do that? Because that's what she felt like. Right. Her glory has been removed. Right. And so she feels naked. So she feels exposed. So she's got to cover herself. Well, what's she going to do? And Tamar put on ashes, put, put ashes on her head and rent her garments, tore the thing up. My future's gone. Oh I'm a nobody. That's I'll right. never make it. I'll right. never get married. Every time I go into the palace now, they'll say, look at her. She ain't a virgin no more. Look at her. You don't know people's stories. I don't know people's, I don't know how people became who they are. <laughs> Rent her garment of diverse colors that was, was. It's hyphened in the Bible, you know, italics. Was on her and laid her hand on her head. And went on crying. She changed her garments of joy to a garment <laughs> of sorrow. Plain, earthen, not royal anymore, just like anybody else. No expectation. Why? Because somebody who said they loved me. Sheba really lusted after me. <laughs> and in the story, I'm not going to hear, but she said, she said to her brother, she said, Amnon, all you got to do is go to, go to our father and he'll make it a legal thing. They don't want to make it legal. That's why pastor encouraged me, make it legal. Get to the altar. Be united in holy wedlock. Because any other type of uniting can result in a grief. A grief. The colored garments. <laughs> Notice she's crying now, isn't it? From joy to sorrow. The colored garments were a message to the onlookers of the testimony of a virgin full of hope, good future, the joys of marriage and motherhood to come. When love is mutated to lust and the actions thereof are they're horrific, there is now a change that takes place in the lives of such women. For Tamar, it was an outward showing of an inward pain. She exchanged her color, colored garments for a garment of mourning and grief. She wore sackcloth from that moment onwards. Many today do not change their outward clothing, hear me, when they have been raped or harmed mm -hmm. by mutated love. Mm -hmm. Instead, they change their inner garments right. mm -hmm. and they carry within themselves feelings of shame, That's grief, right. and pain. Right. Today, I speak to mm -hmm. 
any male, any person, male or female, who has been abused. You don't have to keep on wearing sackcloth. That's right. Jesus. You don't have to grieve forever. Come on now. Do not allow the wrong done to you to label you for the rest of your life. Let the lasting shame be upon the one who did not love you right. Let the lasting love of God cover you and forever love you to your destiny and purpose. Don't, don't stop living because of what others do to you. Live on to be loved by God's agape love. And then you can encourage others to love the very same way.